go with the fourth Jesus the Christ Ministries Mission Sunday Meet, the fourth of the fifth, 2014. So the Easter pageants are well and gone. The Easter season are, is all gone, but we still sing here, though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit be on the vine, we still sing the He rose again. It's a daily thing with us to remember the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. It's a daily thing to remember He has dealt with it all. He, he's dealt with everything that we will encounter yesterday, 15 years ago, 30 years ago and the next 20 years if the Lord will. He's dealt with it all. That's enough to just, look, we don't even need to open the Bible really today. Just to grab hold of that, believe it, we can sail through the week on that. Just to know that. But um, we do have a message today, what the Spirit is saying to the church and worldwide, not, not just to us. That's going to be in 1 Corinthians today. We're going to be reading there. You can just put your marker there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to have a look at that later on. But first, I want to have a look around the world. Watch and pray. See how things are panning out. Hey? And... Uh, the Roman Catholic system is still at it. It's getting worse by the day. And uh, ready to publish and usher in the One World Church, which is already on the earth but not fully manifested. So the canonization of, of popes has been in the news quite a lot. Recently, Pope Francis uh, was canonising uh, John Paul II. Sounds a bit like John Paul Young, doesn't it? Love is in the air. John Paul II and just John, not John Paul, but John Paul II and John, I think it's the 23, 23rd, both canonised. John Paul II and John 23 on the 27th of April. And so as part of these Roman Catholic rites, Pope Francis was presented with relics. I mean, this is getting pretty bad. Relics from both of the two men. A vial of blood belonging to John Paul II and a fleck of skin from the body of John 23, Pope John 23. And the Pope Francis kissed, he kissed each container and placed them at the altar. Hey? I mean, we're getting into idolatry here and worse. And uh, even necromancy. Hey? Worshipping the dead. So, it goes on to say that uh, anyone who came into contact with a dead person or a grave was considered unclean. Brother, anyone that was, came into contact with a grave or a, a dead person was considered unclean and could not <coughs> worship God and was not allowed to worship God. So we're just going to turn in our Bibles and see what the Lord says about this graves and the dead. And Let's go to the Old Testament Leviticus now. Leviticus 21. And I'm only going to read the first verse there. And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, None shall defile himself for the dead among his people. 
You listening? They're defiling themselves. Well, the Roman Catholics are already defiled. The Roman Catholic system, that's why they call it the harlot or whore church in Revelation 17. You're not to defile yourself because of the dead or for the dead, visiting graves and talking to the dead and praying for the dead and all the carry on. It's, it's not of the Lord. Can someone say amen? amen? It's not of our Lord. Jesus said, <clears throat> why do you look for the living among the dead? That's just stupidity, isn't it? Hey? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Now that tells us that we worship a living saviour. We don't worship a dead saviour. As we sang here this morning, he rose again. Yes, he rose again. The lamb, he was slain, but he rose again. we got nothing to do with graves. As I said to my wife, when I die, when I'm dead and gone, there'll be one child born in this world. Carry on, carry on. When I'm dead, just cremate me, get the ashes, go down the street and throw them in the street. And then go and have a, a nice restaurant and rejoin. Because that's where I spent most of my time, on the street. Eh? Now, I don't know how many people here know Rick Warren. He, he, he wrote that book. He's famous for the book Purpose Driven Life. Hey, it's a, I believe it's satanic driven, but and he just recently in, in, endorses a book by uh, called Catholics Come Home. And Rick Warren, Pentecostal, evangelical, charismatic kind of man, famous in Christendom, he said, "I, I fully support this new evangelization project." In an interview. On the, on the Roman Catholic Network, EWTN, hey? Eternal Word Television Network. That's where that uh, that woman, Mother Angelica, used to be. And oh, they love her, you know? Mum's Gospel. And uh, <coughs> EWTN, Roman Catholic Network, he said his favourite TV show is chaplets of divine mercy he also talked about how he loved a headline in a local newspaper in america that said if you love pope francis you will love jesus <laughs> and we just finished looking at the necromancy and the worshiping the dead and canonizing Beatifying, man beatifying, man, mere humans canonizing and beatifying other humans. It can't be done. That cannot be done. In order to be canonized and, and to be beatified and canonized, we need, we need to have one... Uh, from another world do that because this world has been tainted by the original sin no all have sinned but we don't go on in our sin but we have sinned all have sinned not one uh, is sinless only jesus but the saints we're going to look at the message of the saints today the saints don't go on in known sin yes the the pontifical council for laity is hosting a pastors leaders clergy summit in 2014 within the next month in virginia and here's the confirmation of a word that i spoke many years ago and people once again, like when I exposed David Wilkerson for being a whore lover, a Roman Catholic priest lover, 
and saying that they're born again. David Wilkerson, Times Square Church. He reckons they're born again and following Jesus and saved. Hogwash. Hogwash. But he's popular, isn't he? People love it that way. And many years ago, over a decade and a half, easy, used to be a show on the TV about this guy and his wife digging wells in Africa and, and, and striking water for, for the poor, and clothing the poor, and they'd take in millions. His name was James Robertson and Betty Robertson. And I said, he's a fraud. I said, he's not true to Jesus. Well, listen to this. Fifteen plus years later. Now listen to what I'm going to say. The Pontifical Council for the Laity. This is Hall Church. Roman Catholicism at its best. Is hosting the Pastors Leaders Clergy Summit 2014. In Virginia, United States. This month, speakers, speakers will include Roman Catholic and Evangelical leaders such as Jack Hayford, James Robertson. There you have it, isn't it? Now, look, I don't know James Robertson from a packet of wheat pigs, but the Spirit of God shows me these things. You don't have to know someone, but when the Spirit of God shows you something, and gives you a word of knowledge. He shows you clearly. And it will be confirmed. Simple as that. Keith Fauna, Dr. Phillips, and the Billy Graham Evangelical Association. Hey? A summit with the whore church, the Roman Catholic Church, who are into Nacromacy. Talking to the dead. They're into visiting graves. They're into a priesthood that mocks the crucifixion of Christ and the burial and resurrection. And here's James Robertson attending that. And Rick Joyner going along and endorsing Roman Catholics Come Home. Book. Hey? God's extraordinary plan for your life. Hey? It's taking Rome by storm. So let me say this, and I'll finish up. Pope Francis believes that the Holy Spirit started the ecumenical movement. And so does James Robertson and the likes of James Robertson. But it looks good, doesn't it? He's been there for decades. Like a dog's body for the community. Slaving for the community. Thinking that's going to save them. Digging wells. Raising millions of dollars to give water to people and food to people, but not save Hey? The Fred Hollows and the people of the world do these things. It talks of in the Bible, in the book of Acts chapter 10, of Cornelius, a centurion soldier, who done good deeds and, 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 and done many alms, gave many alms and, and done good deeds, but it also says he was not saved. Sister, he was not saved. We simply need to cooperate with, with God and be like Mary, Mother Mary. Continue to say yes to every open door. See, every open door. That's confirmation of my prophecy uh, going back um, over 15 years. 1997, 
I prophesied common ground will be the key factor in the last days. 1997. Common ground. That's what I just said then. This is this is May 2014, and it says we simply need to cooperate with with Him and be like Mother Mary and continue to say yes. Just say yes to every open door. Doesn't matter. Common ground is another word for ecumenical. We're all going to find common ground with each other. Look, if your common ground is not the doctrine of Jesus, you're on, on, you're on unholy ground. That's the common thread amongst us here today. It's not basketball. It's not baseball. It's not gridiron. It's not kung fu. The common thread between us here is not that we're all New Guinea, we're all Samoan, we're all white Australian, or we're all, we're all Aboriginal, or we're all Filipino. The common ground is that, oh, we all went to the same school together. No, it's not. The common thread with us here, and the only thing that brings us here in this A, holy remnant, not the holy remnant, we're A, holy remnant, which is of the holy remnant worldwide. The only thing that brings us together is the Holy Ghost and the Word, Jesus, the doctrine of the Christ. Anything else? I've got nothing in common with anyone here at all. Can someone say amen? amen. Hey? Pope Francis, this is what's been said, he knocked the door down dismantled its hinges and threw the doors out of the way. He, we need to run into the room before those who hate the unity of Jesus' church have time to rebuild the door and lock it up. And talk about Mary. Mary, Mary, you're on my mind. Mary, quite contrary. It's not the village girl of the Bible. It's a mythical Mary. Hey? You know one thing I was saying to a sister this morning about Mary? That Mary never ministered the word. But you know what? A nobody like Paul Sheehan ministers the word. Angels don't preach the gospel. But a nobody like Paul Sheehan preaches the gospel. Hey? The saints, the disciples of Jesus preached it. If Mary was so great, why wasn't she a pastor? If anyone was credentialed, qualified to be a pastor, it would have to be Mary, wouldn't it? But she was never a pastor. Like she could have had the like incubator ministries or something. Pastor Mary. Forward slash incubator ministries. And she could have been signing autographs on her books. How the birth went, you know? No Complications was the first book that Pastor Mary wrote. Come on. We really do need the truth, don't we? Because the Bible says the truth sets you free from you. Send some Satan the wrath to come and help. Brian Houston was on the television this morning spreading his uh, disease as usual. Greatest disease there is is false doctrine, save sin. That's the chief plague is sin and false doctrine is sin isn't it really <clears throat> and as a good man of the one world church Brian Houston was saying that he made mention of Walt Disney and esteemed him 
um, Walt Disney became quite wealthy and all the rest of it, you know. And um, you hear church ministers exalting great, you know, uh, philanthropists like Bill Gates and even Clive Palmer, and the wealthy of the world, wealthy of the nation. And, and, and jo uh, uh, um, uh, Brian Houston e exalts such people and, and esteems them and uses them in his, in his um, teaching. Talk about going forward and, 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 and becoming wealthy and being the head, not the tail the lender and not the borrower, you know, that sort of stuff. And, um, but I don't find, I have never read in my, in my Bible, especially in the New Testament, where uh, any true minister of the Lord had a material vision and visualised uh, uh, material earthly things. That God had given him to build them. I don't find one minister, not one apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. Not one. And when we read of the visions of the apostles and the, uh, uh, and the, the prophets and the evangelists of scripture, it's nothing material, is it? None of them left a material legacy. Not one. You look at the likes of... Walt Disney was not a minister of the gospel. Bill Gates, Clive Palmer, none of them. I don't care how generous you are financially. You must be born again. And then you can give a true message that delivers people from this temporary world and its trash that we're living amongst. The things of the world are like trash. Moses said, uh, or, or Moses forsook Egyptian wares. Paul the Apostle counted everything as dung. We got Brian Houston doing <coughs> seminars. They have financial seminars, how to get out of debt seminars, all kinds of things that the, the men of the Bible didn't even bother themselves with, can someone say amen? amen. Hey? Visions uh, uh, of God planting these things in men's hearts. God doesn't plant. The God of this world may plant material visions in your heart to waylay you, deter you from the true work of the gospel. He, he come to set the captive free. He come to heal the broken hearted. He come to, to uh, put at liberty those who are oppressed of the devil. He come to talk about the Lord, the appropriate year, the coming of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord. None of this is material or of this world. It's an otherworldly message, the message of Jesus. It has nothing to do with the tempering. Hey? No way in the world. So, the Lord Jesus shows us clearly, this is not the gospel. What they're preaching is not the message of Jesus. Hey? To promote the Walt Disney. Look, I don't know. He must have lived a pretty secretive life if he knew Jesus. And that tells me something on its own, doesn't it? Hey? Let's move on and we go into the message any minute now. Tony Hitler Abbott, or Jack the Slasher, as we know him, <laughs> the Roman Catholic Slasher, going through the land. Hey? Satan has a slasher going through the land, finances his song, cutting is his plan, everlasting hatred. Hey, misery in mind. And in this army, hockey has a part. Hey? <laughs> Satan has an army marching through the land. Hey, slashing is this song. 
beating up pensioners is their plan. Right? Everlasting revenue. And pay rises for the parliament. And in this army, hockey has a part. So he's still beating the pensioners down. And if the law was ministering to me, I was listening to Mr. Hockey and Tony Abbott. And as I was listening to the news, the Spirit of God was saying to me that the un underprivileged, if they continue to hit the underprivileged, the criminal, the, the, the crime rate will escalate unprecedented. That's what happened in America. And they cut, 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 cut. And crime just escalated because they have a stingy government that looks after the capitalist and that's him and that's part and parcel with my prophecy of 2001 that Australia will be a third world country and it already is but the, the best parts yes to come I tell you it's going to get worse as the days go by you talk about money too tight to mention hey you go to New York City they say, if you can't make it in New York City, you're not going to make it. As a singer or famous or actor, or, you go to New York City and walk down the main streets, there's beggars on every corner. Beggars, beggars, beggars. Hey? I tell you what, the government can't be doing too good. The government can't be... Obama, look, handy, I won't say what else. Right? Handy is a glass hammer. I was going to say something else then, but I won't. <laughs> Let's go into the message today, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I use this as a base. We're going to be talking about saints. Today, we're going to be talking about saints. 1 Corinthians 12. And... Let's start at verse 28. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets. Third teachers, after that miracles. Then the gifts of healing, helps, administration, variety of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And we know that more excellent way that Paul the Apostle was talking about the more excellent way is love. It's the most excellent way. There's no other way that can lead us into victory, into joy unspeakable, peace that surpasses the understanding of the mind except through love. God is love. So, when we deconstruct that word love, we get L, living, O, obedience. Living in obedience, V, the victor. E, Emmanuel. That's, that's the, the all, the be all. Living in obedience. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 confirms it. Fear God and keep his commands. That's love. John the Beloved said, if by this we know that we love God, we do what he says. We keep his commands. Yeah? There's nothing greater. But here in 1 Corinthians 12, and if you go to all the verses, 1 to 31, it talks about gifts of the Spirit. And we just looked in 28. 
healing, gifts of healing and helps and administration. And some have healing. Some have the gifts of, of, of miracle. Some have word of knowledge. When you read through that, the message today is what is a saint? Or better still, even who is a saint? Who? This was put on my heart due to this pontifical rubbish, the Roman Catholic system, <coughs> saying that they're making people saints. It can never be. They say in the Roman Catholic Church, if you do, what, two or more, I think it is, two or more or four miracles, and you can confirm that, well, you'll be ordained a saint. But this chapter alone cancels that out. Because the gift of miracles is given to who God wants to get that gift. Hey? Right? All these gifts are given by God. So we can't say, oh, that's a sign. There's so many people, there's literally hundreds of thousands of people that never done a miracle, but yet they're a saint. So we want to look at what is a saint. And we're going to deconstruct that word saint. We're going to have a look at it. Gifts don't make you a saint. Hey? <coughs> Being an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, teacher, evangelist ultimately doesn't make you a saint at the end of the day, down the road. Because there might be an apostle, there might be a prophet or a pastor, teacher, evangelist who don't do the word and they will not be recognised as a saint. We always must keep in mind that we are sons of God by faith. We are not manifested sons of God now. That will be manifested on the judgment day. Who is a saint and who is not a saint? Really. But if we open our Bibles to John, let's go there in the writings of John the Beloved, to John. The writings of 2 John. Hallelujah. We're going to go to verse 9. 2 John verse 9. Whoever sins and does not abide in the doctrine of the Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of the Christ has Father and Jesus. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him or her into your house. Don't even shake their hand. For if you greet that one, you'll be sharing in their evil deeds. You're listening today. I mean, this is a cruncher, isn't it? You know one thing I know about the Word of God? It's a sharp sword. Jesus came to bring a sword. He came to divide houses. Matthew 10, 32 to 42, thereabouts. He did not come to bring peace as we know peace. You know what man says peace is and woman? couch potato with the bills paid the bills are paid sitting on the couch eating pizza peace they call that <laughs> sorry there's no peace unless you have made peace with your maker you have no peace you're always floundering Always at a quandrum. Always 
Hum-ha. Saints are not hum-ha. Maybe it could be, I don't know. Whoever sins and does not abide, live, living in the doctrine, live there, not visiting, live in the doctrine of the Christ, does not have Christ. So where are the Roman Catholics? Where are the Roman Catholics? They have another doctrine. But yet they say they're of God. I tell you now, we need to know what we're dealing with. These are the last of the last days. Hey? We're in the last of the last days. Signs of the times are all around. Hey? All around is sinking sand. Be careful where you walk. Be careful who you greet. Be careful who you associate with. Birds of a feather flock together. I've never seen a parrot's feather in a magpie. Hey? I've never seen that. Never. Whoever sins and does not live in the doctrine of the Christ does not have God. He who lives in the doctrine has Father and the Son. Hey? We, our message today is what is a saint? I just read it. I just read what a saint is. I just read it. That's what a saint is. A saint lives in the doctrine of the Christ. That's how one of the hallmarks of a true saint. Pope John Paul II and, and, and uh, John 23 are not saints. Brother, Shadrach, you go around the front and uh, thank you for that. You go around the front and lock that, brother. They're not saints. They don't abide in the doctrine. They got all sorts of things about necromancy and, and, and blood and dead people and graves and priests that don't exist. We, we read it before, didn't we? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. 28. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Now you are the body of the Christ and members. That's 27, sorry. We are the body of, of the Christ and members individually. Amen? We are the body of the Christ members. And God, listen to this, and God has appointed these in the church priests. Apostles, nuns, cardinals. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. He tells us here what's in the church. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Can you say amen? And the elaboration of that verse will be found in Ephesians 4.11. Brother, Glory to the Lamb, eh? So, our message today, what is a saint? What is a saint? A saint is one who God has appointed. God has saved. Let's go to John 3. Hey? Eh? Not religion. John 3. In our Bible. Thank you, brother. John 3. And let's read verse 5. Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He's not a saint. She's not a saint. We have to be born of the water and the Spirit. You're listening today. We have to be born of water and spirit. 
The word, the doctrine of Jesus. If they don't have the doctrine of Jesus, they're not of God. We, we read it in 2 John 9 to 11, did we not? Someone say amen. The water is the word, the spirit is the Holy Ghost. Hey? Right? That's a saint. Not all saints will be manifested sons of God. At the end. Because many will come and say, Lord, Lord. Many saints will come and say, Lord, Lord. Many saints will come and say, I prophesied. I cast out demons. By the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. That's how you cast out a demon. A demon will not come out of anyone at the name of a demon. Or in the name of a human. Because demons know they have more power. They have power over humans. You're listening. And no demon listens to any other demon. They all hate each other. It's all satanic. It's like thieves in the end. They all end up destroying each other, don't they? They all kill each other. All the robbers in the dens of thieves, they want to get the, to, to the top. So they kill the next one. And then they kill that until there's nothing left. They've all killed each other. Well, that's the devil's way, isn't it? What is a saint? Who is a saint? Well, we must be born of water, not of a woman. Must be born again. The water is the word. Washing of the water of the word. Can someone say amen? And then we're born of the spirit, the Holy Ghost. I'm born of his spirit. I'm a part of the family of the body of Christ. I'm a member. I'm a part of the family, the family of God. I've been born of his spirit. Yes, I've been washed in his blood. Oh, I'm a joint heir with Jesus as I travel along. I'm a part of the family, the family of God. And God has given gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into the one body where the Jew grew. Where the slaves were free and have all been made to drink in the one spirit. This is the body of Christ. The one spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's not the world in Christendom. Can someone say amen? Verse 11. One and the same Spirit works all these gifts, distributed to each one individually as He wills. You listening? Look, we're in a mess. The world's in a mess. The churches are in a mess. Who? Who does this? Individually as He wills. He distributes to each one. But yet they go to, to college they, they, they go and learn to be a pastor. And they learn to be a prophet, an apostle, teacher. They go and pay top dollar for it. And, and yet they go and claim to be so spiritual. I oh, went Pentecostal. Oh, hallelujah. And, and, and they're buying books on how to be a healer. I oh, went Pentecostal. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Hoopla, hoopla. Booga there, booga there. Hey? But he's the one who distributes to each one as he wills. What are they called? 
1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning spiritual courses. I mean, whoops. Spiritual gifts. Gifts. I've never done anything to become a preacher, a teacher, a singer, a guitar player, a writer. I didn't do anything. I didn't go to learn off anyone. It's a gift. Someone say amen. So, a saint. Look, I don't know. I, are we going to do a series on this? I don't know. I can tell you what, I can feel the series coming on. The sa- Bonafide Saint Series. Glory! Hallelujah! Whoo! Where are we? <clears throat> so, deconstructing the word saint, S is for saved. You can't be a saint. Look, root grass level, where the rubber meets the road, you must be saved to be a saint. You have to be born again. See you later, Roman Catholic system. See you later, religious organisations. You must be born of the water <coughs> and of the spirit. Hey? Romans 10, 9 and 10. What does it say? Let's read it. Romans 10. Well, I'm born. Ah, I'm born of his spirit. Ah, I'm born of his spirit and washed in his blood. 9, Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be come a saint. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. You will become a saint. We sang this morning, he rose again. We believe that. Well, yes, he rose again. Confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that Father raised Jesus from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to sainthood, to salvation. Amen. Must if we're going to be saints. We're going to have to be born again to start with. Let me tell you, Pope John, John Paul II was not born again. He's not born again. Uh, John 23, not born again. Mother Teresa, not born again. Because if you're born again, you bring the doctrine of Jesus. What is a saint? It's certainly not Roman Catholicism. There's not one there. And James Robinson, remember he's going to meet with the pontifical uh, 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 clowns? And Betty will probably be taken along with him. And he's going to meet with them. Does he have the true doctrine? He's going to go there and shake everyone's hand. At the Pontifical Council for Laity. Pontifical. What on earth would James Robinson, Jack Hayford, big names, what would they be doing at the Pontifical Council for Laity? No business. Shaking hands. Pastors, leaders, clergy, evangelicals, key speakers, James Robertson. Did you know that James Robertson was, was a good friend 
of David Wilkerson. And did you know that David Wilkerson was on James Robinson's TV show saying that, oh, it's no good preaching in hellfire and brimstone now. People just don't like it. David Wilkerson. They just don't like it anymore. You just can't get them in. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Hi. Message today. What is a saint? Who is a saint? Well, the starting blocks are in reality, you must be born again. You see, Jesus said this, I know my sheep and my sheep know my voice. Yeah? Not my food trough. He doesn't know my sausages, sausage sizzles. My sheep know my voice. That's the doctrine again. It all comes back to the doctrine, the very thing the churches in the world today say, don't bother with doctrine, it creates division. It creates trouble. It's sort of like a sword. Jesus says more than that. He said it will divide your house into pieces. And then he'll know whether you love him, number one, or number none. If you all love grandma more. My beautiful son, he's gone through university. He means more to me than Jesus. Or mum or dad. I don't want to get booted out of my my uh, traditional uh, council position, my cultural position, where I wear my my beads and my headdress. Look, Sister Jenny will tell you. She comes from New Guinea. They're all the feathers and all the rest of it, and they're still going on with their voodoo. And, and, and cannibalism or whatever and claiming Jesus at the same time. Hogwash. Something has to go. Barbecued men have to go or Jesus. The beetle nut goes. Look, the tattoos on the face go or Jesus goes. You with me? And Sister Jenny's a pure proof where she come from, where she's been and raised. But now, ha, ha, ha. See, that's another one. Oh, look at the tattoos on your arm. Oh, look at the tattoos here. Oh, look at this. I got tattooed. I say, that's where I was, a silly boy getting tattooed, thinking I was a man and I was still a wimpy little sinner. It don't make you a man. Cutting yourself with a knife, that's self-harm. You get no medals for that. Someone say amen. You got them out there, they're bashing people in a boxing ring. They say, oh, they're, 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 good. they're good team leaders. And they're in a boxing ring smashing someone. Oh, that's a good sign for the children. Lead them in the right way. It leads them out of trouble then. Hello? And they're bashing people in a boxing ring. You get in a boxing ring, you mean business. You're going to smash that bloke. Because if you don't take that attitude, you ain't going to be no one in the boxing ring. You're just going to be some pussy. Get belted down every time you get in the ring. you got to go into that ring. You're going to do martial arts? I used to do martial arts. And I was told by my instructor, fella, you got a decision to make. You want the eye of the tiger or not? Well, you got to go in there to kill. I said, see ya. You ain't going to be nobody in a boxing ring or martial arts or anything if you don't have the eye of the tiger. And that's got nothing to do with, with the words of Jesus, I'm telling you now. You can't play both worlds. It's one way or the other. It's the world or Jesus. It's your way or the highway to man, isn't it? No, your way or Yahweh. 
What is a saint? I've got to tell you, they got cage fighting in churches now. Cage fighting. Pastors fighting other men in America and they say it's okay. They say it's acceptable. Hogwash. It's violence. Jesus said, turn the other cheek, not bash the other cheek. Hello? And we don't want to hear about it. It's all self. Brother, you get that door there, please? Self-protection, isn't it? you got to defend yourself. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Resist not an evil man. Is that right? Well, that's only going by what Jesus said. Well, you see, Paul the Apostle, and they went to whip him. And we're reading in the book of Acts, and they went to, to strike Paul the Apostle with the cat of nine tails. So he grabbed... He, he grabbed a table and smashed him over the head and ran into Damascus and escaped the hand of his enemy. Hogwash. He said, lay him on me, man, and make him good. Woo! Calvary! Lay it on me. Do your best. Because when you finish with me, my master's going to do his best with you. And I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end of that. Next. Uh, who is a saint? Who really is a saint? We're looking at it. The first, the saint is saved, don't they? They're saved from the flesh and, and, and doing things our way. And I've got to protect myself because Jesus can't protect me. That's the world. That's I did it my way. Frank Sinatra he used to run prostitutes. Elvis Presley had more women than I've had meals. I did it my way. So all is well. Come on. We we got it. There is a new and living way. New way. New heart. Brand new, plastic, still on the cords. <laughs> Jesus never said he'd give you a patched up heart, second hand or recondition. He said brand new. I'll take the stony heart out and give you a heart of flesh. Amen? Soft, perceptive, responding to the word of God, responding to the Lord. Not with like, like a horse with a bit in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. See the size of a horse's neck? Yeah. You gotta put a bit in their mouth. Yeah. Or does the Lord is it like Ezekiel where God took Ezekiel by one of the locks of his hair and said, Come with me. Just a strand of hair. He's easily led, isn't he? Not by the world, but by the Lord. Willing. That talks about willingness. Here I am, Lord, use me. Not here I am, Lord, I'm going to use you. <laughs> We're going to use Jesus for our own end. I'll make some money out of this. That's a fool, the Bible says. The silly person thinks that godliness is a means of gain. It's actually a means of loss. Loss of your life, loss of your superficial friends, loss of your uh, family members who are full of hatred, loss of and sin, loss of possessions, loss of acceptance, loss of everything. In the name of Jesus. It's not gain, gain, gain. Those of you who think it's gain... Are, are, are bankrupt and void of the truth. They have not the truth. Yeah? Christianity, e, why did I use that word? Being a disciple of Jesus is about giving yourself to Jesus and giving yourself to uh, your neighbour and giving yourself as a servant. Saints are servants. Saints are saved. S is for saved. 
S A I N T N. We got a series, I'm sure of it now. Well, we've only done the end. Romans 11.22 tells us again. This one, another description of a saint. Ah! I will follow him, follow him wherever he may go. I will follow him. Where are we? Romans. Romans. Romans 11. The verse is 22. Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fail severity, but towards you goodness if you continue. There you go. Continue. If you continue. If you continue. These he's talking to saints that may not end up saints. They may not end up manifested sons of God. You're listening. If you continue, well, if you continue, goodness. Otherwise, you'll be cut off from being a saint. Paraphrase there by Paracleme. Moving through an earthen vessel. Me, Paul Chan. Yeah? So what is a saint? Who is a saint? A saint is saved. A saint is saved and being saved. But not saved to the uttermost yet. In order to be a manifested son of God, we need to be saved to the uttermost. We're saved when we're born again, and then we go on to the next step, being saved. Which is where Romans 11.22 comes in, yeah? If you continue. Because some were saved and as we read about the seed falling on the stony ground and the seed falling on the thorny ground and the seed falling on the uh, the other ground and the seed fell on the noble ground. Hey? The cares of the world come in and choke it all. And, but it was a saved situation. Because the thorns come in and choked it. We don't allow the cares of this world to choke our walk with Jesus, do we? No. So what is a saint? It's definitely not Roman Catholic. Because it's God that gives the gifts. It's God that says, oh, I allowed you to believe. Philippians uh, one twenty nine. It has not only been granted to you to believe, but also to suffer. It's a grant. It's not of man. Being a saint has nothing to do with man. But yet you got the Pope uh, making people saints. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. You got the Pope canonizing. Look, it blasts me away. I do, da boom. It blows me away, that canon. The canon of the Roman Catholic Church is not the canon of the Christ. Because the canon of Christ blows you out of you. And you're just left with you and Christ. Kaboom. And this message today, it'll blow the Roman Catholics away with the take home pain. Can you say amen? And their, and their indulgences. Ephesians 2 <coughs> 8. What's it say? For by grace you have been made a saint through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Now let's read on. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. How's that? You like that? Not of words. Not of yourself. Not of a man. Not of a man. 
Man, that's not man's plan. Huh? Man's plan is to beat you. Man's plan is to be better than you. Huh? Man's plan is always that one notch above the neighbour. But God's plan is equality. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. Yeah? Someone say amen. amen. Hey? Born again, not of man, not of our family. Hey? Not of, not of anyone. But of God. Hey? Glory to the Lamb. The Galilee Lamb. What is a saint? A saint is, is, is canonized by God. A saint is made beautiful. A human is made into a saint and made beautiful and, and no longer an ugly person selfish person this happens by the word of God faith obedience to the word of God will make you a selfless person will make you a saint when we came to the Lord what did we come to we come to the word born again of the water the word born of a man, not a woman, the son of man, the man from Galilee, the word. Never no longer selfish, ugly people. Selfish people are ugly. Sickening. It's all about self. Them, 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 them. I don't want to hear it. Forget about you. Forget about yourself for five minutes. Oh, my career and what I'm going to do. and Oh, this and I'm, me and my and I. And, oh, yeah, I'm going to be the hero of the community and end up just a dog's body for the community. Doormat. Hellbound doormat. Jesus is no doormat. Jesus is a servant. <laughs> Even a servant wipes his feet on the doormat. Don't want to be no beast of burden. Don't want to be no beast of burden. Well, be a servant of the Lord. Get yourself born again. Be a saint. Be saved. Be selfless. Be sanctified. And I have sanctified you, separated you unto myself. The one who betrothed. Hey? We're betrothed to one husband. Not two, three, four, or five. One. Now you are the body of the Christ. Individual members. And God has appointed these in the church. Apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists. There's gifts of healing, administration, helps, different kinds of tongues, discerning of spirits, interpretation of tongues, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, healings, all by the same spirit. One of the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one as he wills. Oh, I'm going to go and learn how to be a pastor. What a mockery to the Lord. And they sell them this garbage. They're peddling this garbage. they got price tags and barcodes on this garbage. Some man's going to make you a prophet or a pastor or a teacher, evangelist. Oh, yeah, you do the course and then you're a pastor. Hogwash. you got to have a pastor's heart to be a pastor. you got to be selfless and you got to care about the destination. Of the people. Amen. Not their pride and their flesh. you got to have a heart to see them. Glory bound. 
So you tell them the truth. If you love somebody, you set them free. If you love somebody, ah, set them free. Free, free, set them free. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Don't lie to them. Tell them the truth. That's what sets people free. As you've been, and, and, and the people listening to this message today, they've been set free from this garbage Christian religion today. They've got the truth today. Gifts, gifts, gifts. The officers, the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, they're gifts. Healing, miracles. Yeah, I'm going to buy the book on miracles and learn how to, now I stand to the left a bit. Oh, I, no. I get me comb out of my pocket, comb the left side of my hair. And then I, oh, I say, woundy, woundy. Oh, bully, bully, bully. And then, if they're not healed, oh, I'll tell them, maybe down the road someday. Uh, I'll come back next week. It only cost you another $300. Um, and that's what the church is to follow. It's as he will, the whole lot. As he wills. He is the potter. He wants to make someone a vessel of dishonour, he will. Like the Pope, he, <laughs> he made him a vessel of dishonour. <laughs> and they're running around with their rubbish. Because they reject the love that comes with the truth. They've rejected the Christ message. They've rejected the truth and set them free. They don't want to be set free. They're like the ones where the light shone in the darkness. John chapter 1 verse 5. And they could not comprehend or apprehend. They couldn't understand what was being said. They just look at you dumb. Because their heart was had another agenda. As I said in my testimony... I just crying out, Help! A billion times louder than that, and no one heard me. Only Jesus. I need somebody, Lord, not just anybody. I need someone. Help. When I was younger, so much younger than today, I didn't think I needed anybody helping anyway. And then Jesus put into motion a plan. The strategist to end all strategies in the strategic realm. And that Aboriginal came across my path. Hey, brother. You're in sin, eh? You need to repent, man. You're on your way to hell. Look at you. I heard the voice. I thought, I know that voice. That's that voice that was under the tree. When I was about four or five. <laughs> my sheep know my voice. They follow me. They follow in the way of my voice, my doctrine. And I have something for everyone that does that. Eternal life. There's lots of voices out there. Lots of advice. Just look, listen to the radio. Just listen to the TV. It's all there, isn't it? Ask the experts. But if you listen carefully, you'll hear another voice. But you must listen carefully. And you must listen every day. Must listen every day? Yeah. Romans 11, 22. <laughs> Unless you continue, he'll cut you off. He cut the natural branches off. And he'll cut the Gentile branches off just as quick, if not quicker. He said so. Not Paul Sheehan. He said, he cut the natural branches off. How much more will he cut you off? If you do not continue in his, what? 
goodness and the good news. Glad. Tiling. That's the goodness. The good news. If you don't continue in the good news. Right? In the word of the Lord. We're looking at a saint. What is a saint? I mean, who is a saint? We, we got a glimpse in today. We got a little bit in there. We got the S and, and we need to continue on. Don't we? We still got plenty more to do on the S, on the, on the S side. We, but we did get a glimpse of a true saint. Hey? Born of the true doctrine. Not just any old religious slop. You can't be saved and, and, and accept and go along with the Roman Catholic dogma. That's not saved. That's not Jesus' doctrine. That's just some made up hogwash. We're going to go along. And little by little, S A I N T. Hey? Then we know who is a saint and, and, and who is uh, going to be a saint on the judgment day and who will be a manifested son of God. We're all just sons of God by faith. Though the born again are not manifested sons of God yet, but by faith. If we cease, if we don't continue, we'll never be manifested sons of God. We'll never be manifested to the whole planet as these are my sons here. He has given it to those who, who believe him to become, you actually become a son of God. Yeah? To become. It's not just bang, oh that's it, done and dusted, and go, live your life like a dog. Hey? No, we become sons of God. And it's not becoming for a son of God to have any other doctrine save the doctrine of the Son of God. Can someone say Amen? Hey? <laughs> so, our message today, what is the same? This is perfect timing that the Lord has placed this on my heart uh, even before the the canonization of John Paul II and uh, John 23. Hey? Prior to that. And I thought it falls beautifully right in the centre to minister the truth to the world. And those out there who would hear this message would have to stop and think. They would have to ask themselves, where am I? What road am I on? Once they hear this, just the introductory message of what is a saint? Who is a saint? Eh? You'd have to ask the question, wouldn't you? Man, lie. It's just like the Lord said. If we don't accept the truth and the love of the truth and reject it, we'll be handed over to strong delusion. Necromancy. Look, visiting graves, trying to find life among the dead. Cannot be. Hey? Paul the Apostle said they'll be handed over to strong delusion. And what is the strongest of delusions? There's delusions and then there's strong delusion. The strongest delusion, the strongest delusion there is, is to believe willfully the lie and the liar Satan. There's no stronger delusion than to believe the lie and the liar. Like Eve. We've seen how strong that was. It must have been so strong. It was strong enough to cut up Pulled her out of the kingdom and out of the garden, just like Cherry Lafron, you know, get out of here. You're not wanted in my garden. I don't want you here. It's sort of like a, you know, go away from me thing, isn't it? I don't know you. I don't want to know you. 
But that's what it really translates to be. I don't want to know you. He must have known them if they uh, had the power to cast out demons. But now he basically says, I don't want to know you. Prophesy. Cast out demons. And they call him Lord. Just like the rich man. Just like the rich man. <laughs> uh, the devil is defeated, you know. I'm always laughing in my quiet time. I laugh how Jesus flogged the devil. Hey? Just totally flogged him. He's armless. He disarmed him, eh? Huh? The devil's a master of distraction. He just wants to get you off the track, you know, try to come in and interfere. <laughs> I've seen it for 27 years daily. Anything to get you off the track, to try and sidetrack your mind. Just get you off that bit. The power of the Holy Ghost is far beyond. Any noise, any distraction, any man, any woman, any devil, and Satan himself, he's just far beyond. Hey? Jesus is, is the champion of champions, undisputed champion of the world. And he wants everyone to know, if you want to be a saint, it's not like being a member of a buffalo club. There's a lot more to it. Eh? We must sort this out with fear, trembling. That doesn't sound like a James Robertson message. It doesn't sound like a Billy Graham message. Or there's going to be a lot of sinners in heaven. That's because you... When you're born again, you're still a sinner. <laughs> so you're not born again, are you? How can you be born again? If you're born again, you're not, you're not, not a sinner, right? You'd be a saint, wouldn't you? <laughs> I give you all the glory today, Jesus. And everybody said, and amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord.